Hey guys, it's Joe from GadgetryTech.com and today I'm going to talk to you about the Alta Audio Alyssas. Now the Alyssa is a special speaker for a lot of reasons and most of that of course comes from the sound quality but there's a lot that went into the speaker on the design and engineering side. Um, the Michael Levy, the one who basically started Alta Audio, the passionate audio engineer behind all this science madness that went into this is hell bent on getting the most out of a speaker enclosure. Uh, it's, it's not just like you get a powerful woofer and a good tweeter, you throw them in a box and it should sound good. There's so much art that goes into tuning and selection and all that, um, that the final product becomes something greater than the sum of its parts. And what makes the Alyssa special, you can tell the dimensions are different. It's not a square box. And uh, Michael Levy, I talked to him on the phone. Um, I was so lucky to get some firsthand experience from someone like him and he said, you know, musical instruments aren't square, so why should a speaker be? And he views speakers as a musical instrument and tunes them as such. Because at the end of the day, he's trying to bring the musical instruments into your home. Or a studio or wherever you may be listening to these. So the dimensions are different. It's It has a 14 and a quarter inch depth at the bottom, but it's 13 and a quarter inch on top. Because the speakers actually do this a little bit when you're looking at it from the side. When you look at it from the front, naturally the bottom is wider and then it gets more narrow at the top. And the and the height, total height is about 15 inches with the spikes. Everything's curved and tapers. So there's a lot that goes into that. And um, at the dimension shouldn't matter too much because if you're placing these the way they should be placed, which is at least 18 inches off the wall behind them and at least two feet off the wall to the side, if you get all that right, you're going to get a really rewarding listening experience. But at that distance, the width and height of this bookshelf shouldn't matter much. It's really just to give you a perspective of what, of what to expect for size when they show up at your door. They weigh 28 pounds, so they're actually pretty heavy. Um, but it's a bookshelf, so it's it's maneuverable enough. And they start at $5,000. I didn't even start with price yet because I'm so excited to talk about these. But gloss black is $5,000. You can get it in rosewood or beechwood for six thousand, uh, which obviously adds a thousand dollars more. Just like what happened with the Alex, which starts at nine and go up to ten. If either of the three finishes aren't right for you, you can email and inquire about custom finishes. So if you have a custom finish in mind, I have no idea what the turn time is or the cost, but it's an option. I was told that still goes on and that's available, and you can email it and it's advertised on their website too. So that's pretty cool. Now, as far as the performance ratings go, um, this is a four ohm speaker. It has an 87.5 decibel sensitivity rating, so not the most sensitive out there. Um, and it has a power handling of 50 to 150 watts. I've tried several amplifiers on these, and even though they're not as efficient as the Alec, they still work well with most amplifiers, uh, just especially with the way they're tuned. Um, my pairing of choice with this one, uh, I actually use the PS Audio Stellar Strata. $3,000 amplifier, but it has a, a 150 watt times two output. And that has a pretty flat neutral sound to it, which worked really well with the Alyssas because the Alyssas are tuned to produce sound a certain way. And I didn't want to take away from that. I, I wanted to try to hear it as close as the original intent as possible. So whether you have a, a less expensive amplifier, you know, I use the Denon 3700H, which is great for movies. Um, but it became apparent that, you know, even when you're hitting 60, um, it's not quite as loud as it was when it was hooked up to my other speakers. Sound quality is still no contest, but I just want to point that out. So the frequency response is interesting, too. So this is rated at 32 hertz all the way up to 47,000 hertz or 47.5 kilohertz, if you will. Um, it's three decibel slope, but 
that is an extremely wide frequency response. And, and at the 47,000 hertz range, that's a full over a full octave over what the human ear can hear. And 32 hertz bookshelf speaker. A lot of people don't think that goes together. And um, that comes to a lot of things done on the tuning side. And I'll get into that in a moment. But 32 hertz is deep. So deep, which I think, by the way, I think it actually goes under 30 from just the way it sounds. Um, you don't need a subwoofer. So these are larger, but if you want a true, pure two-channel listening experience, you can easily do that with the Alyssas. And I'll get into how it compares to towers and stuff, but um, that's a very wide frequency response. And part of that, again, was to try to mimic what live music sounds like. Live music doesn't have this hard cutoff on the bottom and top. It's full. It's more an, uh, analog, right? So... Um, I like that it's as wide as it is, and it's no joke. The specs are legit because when you listen to it, um, they sound special. You can tell right away it's a totally different experience than what you'd expect from any other bookshelf. So, Now, as far as the driver and, and tweeter go, um, this uses a Morel 6-inch, 3.1-inch voice coil driver. It uses a magnesium casket, which uh, magnesium was chosen because of its resonant char uh, resonance characteristics. Aluminum tends to resonate at like 4,000 hertz, so they liked the way the magnesium casket performed. Um, basically, there was a lot of selection put in place, not only from the power handling capability and the base excursion capability of the driver, but also on the um, characteristics of the speaker and materials themselves, how they sound tonally, their resonant frequencies, all these things combined um, are being factored in to how it pairs with the enclosure and the tweeter. Now the tweeter is separated with a third order uh, crossover. 18 decibel slope can be aggressive, but in this case it's not an issue because it's tuned properly. And a third order um, tweeter or crossover is not an issue as long as it's tuned well, which it is here. Part of that comes from using a nice fat two inch ribbon tweeter on top which has an incredibly wide frequency response. And it's so fast at transient response. Um, it's extremely accurate and it's extremely full. But the, the crossover matrix set up and the way it's tuned, it's seamless. And if you're not putting your head right next to the speaker and you're farther back, it's it's almost impossible to tell where the crossover is. Um, it's, it's just so smooth and so full that the music is coming out as one. And that, so that to me suggests that it was tuned pretty well. And for my listening tests and experiences, which I've got hundreds, if not over, well over a thousand hours at this point on this speaker, um, I never found any glaring weakness in that crossover point. So I'm really happy with the way that's set up. Another thing that went into this speaker is the enclosure. So it's incredibly inert, much like the Alec is. It's a little bit lighter sounding on top, but that it's still very inert. And then if you go to the front, which has the damp hard uh, faceplate technology, I'm hitting that pretty hard. You can see the speaker moving and that's on a hard floor right now. Um, the damp hard technology is to reduce or completely eliminate resonance in the enclosure itself. So the entire faceplate, it's, not, it's designed to not transmit some of the frequencies uh, from top to bottom, if you will. It, they don't want to color the sound because of the enclosure. They want full control over the characteristics of the sound. So that was used for that. Then this also uses a hybrid port technology, which uses their XTL um, transmission line, the extended transmission line uh, for bass tuning and the port as well. So your ports are handling your uh, resonance up and then your uh, transmission line is resonance down. And by using that transmission line, they can tune this enclosure much like a musical instrument. I don't have a PhD in auto engineer, audio engineering, so I'm not going to dive too far down that rabbit hole as far as what you can and can't do or, or how that affects it. I can tell you that because of this tuning capability and using their XTL um, design, they didn't have to use any dampening or padding inside the enclosure. It's damp, damper free, I guess, if you will, or dampening free. So it's, it's interesting because at the end of the day, um, Again, what comes out as the final product is what's most important. But it's it's just a very different design philosophy 
than what you typically see or hear on almost every speaker out there. Um, it's not a common thing, and I don't know why, because this has been my favorite kind of sound that I've heard on speakers. And the I guess the big thing I could say, this will segue us into the audio side. Um, I know a few audio people locally, um, either former Magnolia pros, um, which obviously you get a good hand of experience with high-end speakers there, or just really passionate audio guys. And I've brought this to people's homes. I've had them come here. And it's whether it's their favorite speaker or not, and a lot of times it ends up being one of their favorite things they've heard, um, it's it's surprising in how they sound because they're doing things that people didn't think was possible. Part of that coming from the bass, part of that coming from the imaging and how much you can get out of something this big. I mean, my arm is longer than this. And if you close your eyes, you would think the speaker is four feet tall, two feet wide, and I have a sub somewhere. Um, they punch so far above their weight and size, it's shocking. All right, so getting into sound quality, this is my favorite part to talk about because the specs sure give you a little education behind the speaker and, and the why and the philosophy behind it. But at the end of the day, when you take it home and plug it in and play your first track, second track, 50 tracks later, um, how does it make you feel? How does the music sound and how do you connect to it? And the, there's something special with the way the Alex were tuned that made me fall in love with them. My, my favorite bass I've ever heard and the imaging was insane. Um, you'll notice the title of this YouTube video and the graphic I picked, it says Phantoms of the Opera. And I'll start with the imaging because the rest of the stuff we can explain more um, categorically, if you will. But if I were to drop a black cloth over the front of my room and I had just these two sitting on, you know, the little speaker stands here and I sat people down in the listening spot, the sweet spot. I played some of my favorite tracks. And then I'll just ask them, you know, how many speakers do you think you're up front right now? How many speakers do you hear? And I will not get the same answer every time. I, people are not gonna say, those are just two speakers. I can tell one's there, one's there. It, it screws with your mind if you don't know <laughs> what's there. And then you find out it's just two bookshelves because there, the center stage was so incredible and the blend from your left and right channel. Now, granted, you want really good components to get the most of it. Um, I found that the speakers basically vanish in the front of the room. If you had it set up correctly and the spacing is there, the liveliness or deadness of the room is set up well. And basically <clears throat> closer to the speaker side, you want the sound to be more dead. So you want, uh, if you're doing acoustic treatment, put that closer to the speaker side and then have it a little bit more lively around you where the walls are uh, harder, brighter sounding walls. You know, more of like if you do the slap, do you hear a little bit more of a, a reverb where you're sitting versus where the speakers are? So if you get all that set up and you do what I'm saying, and it's it's remarkable how so many points in the room can be used to project sound when it's just coming out of two speakers. It doesn't seem possible. So the imaging is incredible. And then you back that up with the most deep, uh, rich, lush sounding bass. And I'm not talking like overpowering muddy bass. What it is is it just feels, the speakers feel like they're larger, more grand, they're accompanied by a sub. And I think that what makes the bass response so special because it's more of a, a rumble effect like the bass isn't hitting you it's like hugging you like you're really getting a lot of it and it's meaty and it has heft to it and that makes a big difference with certain genres you know if you listen to electronic music that's always hitting at 120 beats per minute and it's a hard hitting bass a lot of good speakers are going to sound fine there they're going to have that nice you know 80 to 150 hertz bass just hitting away but when you listen to a really good jazz track, for example, and that nice deep, deep bass that hits the, that 30 hertz bass, um, it's like it's like having a hot chocolate on in the winter. You know, it just feels right. It feels so much more special, so much more intimate, and that greatly exposes 
either poorly tuned or inadequate speakers. You can immediately tell where the difference is from something like this to another speaker that just sounds good for, you know, techno, for example. So um, the bass to me was the uh, big part of what made these sound as good as they did. Then you get to the mids, which is magic because the mids are can be scary on a two-way system. Again, it all comes down to tuning, but there is so much fullness to the mids. And I'm not talking just guitar strings and rock and all that. The vocals on the Alyssa's, um, they just, they take over the room and it really brings the artist into the room with you, depending on the track you're listening to. I found that when I was listening to several songs, you know, like I'll put, for example, Stevie Ray Vaughan's uh, Tin Pan Alley. If you haven't heard that song before and you have a decent system at home, find that. Um, it had the first few minutes are just like guitar riffs, the, the drums, they're just having a good time. And then his voice comes in and it's, it's just like, I'm trying to, man, it, it's such a special listening experience when you hear it on a system like this, because as soon as that rolls into the room, it cuts right into your soul and you're now listening to the story that Stevie Ray Vaughan's telling you, you know, when they do the whole drum gunshot thing, it's, it just takes control of the room. These command the room. Um, and not in a way that it's like punching you in the face. It's just so full and present at every frequency. Now, when you get into the highs, admittedly, I, I love ribbons, though they're my favorite for upper frequencies um, because they're incredibly accurate. A, a well-made ribbon is just so, so fast um, at transients, yet still somehow so full sounding. It doesn't sound like you know, your tin can, like I have a hard time with certain titanium tweeters because you can tell with the resonance of them, they're just a little sharper. And I like a nice smooth full sound. I don't want to feel like I'm missing something, but I don't want it so in my face where it's like, you know, hitting you in the face, right? So um, the highs are, I don't want to say recessed, they're just really smooth and they're still present and you're still going to hear everything. You'll hear the cymbals, etc. cetera. Um, even the dynamics are great, at least at medium to louder listening volumes. It's it's phenomenal. So if you like really bright, lively sounding speakers and you want every song to have a shot of caffeine in it, this isn't your shot of caffeine. This is more like you go home and you want to have a sip of bourbon or something like that and just enjoy the music and let the music kind of take over the night. That's what these do. And I've had more intimate listening experiences with these speakers than any other audio product I own. Um, that's including headphones, which obviously can get extremely intimate if you have a really good headphone. You know, I use planar magnetic headphones, sound phenomenal. Um, but there's something special about two speakers set up properly, just filling the room because you feel it, the music, you're not just hearing it. And I think that's a more of a transformative experience if, and I, I just wish more people could hear stuff like this because they're so special. So um, I could talk about this part of the review for an hour and start going through all my favorite songs, but I can't waste all of your time. My goal is to help explain the way the music makes you feel and the way these speakers make you feel because of it. Um, and I hope I did a good job there because to me, that's really what is the most important thing at the end of the day. And um, this is a bittersweet moment for me because this was sent to me for review. I have to send these back now that my review is done. Um, I was sick for a while, so unfortunately I couldn't film these the way I wanted to or really play with them. I had some health issues, but now that the time has come, I have to send them back. And I can tell you, I already tried switching back to some of my other speakers again. Um, for music listening and it, it's it's unfortunate because now I know what what the potential of music listening is and these exposed a lot of flaws in my other speakers that I enjoyed a lot that I didn't know were there and it's mainly believe it or not the biggest flaw to me was the mid-range because I use I upgraded to SVS subs to fill the sub bass because that was missing before not the best setup to do for music but I have a choice if the sub bass isn't there with these, I didn't need the subs, but also that the vocal quality is so 
tonally sexy. It's just so perfect um, that I I know nothing has compared to it that I've owned before, and I don't think I'll hear something like this until I get another alt audio speaker down the road, or someone else comes up with some other speaker that has similar tonal characteristics. But um, this is a special speaker. I hope what I said conveyed that. And that if you're on the fence about something like this, at least do whatever it takes to try to hear them. Whether you pull the trigger or not, finding where they're on display or um, buying a set to demo it for a while. I know there's a, a return um, um, capability if you buy these through the Alta Audio website. So if for any reason you think that you don't like them, you can send them back. Obviously try to keep them for at least a few weeks because they, they need a couple hundred hours to really break in and the sweet spot starts happening closer to 500 hours. So once you've got them all dialed in and you get your good source equipment, I, I, I don't know of another bookshelf that sounded like this that I've ever heard in my life. And I'm talking five, 10, 15 grand. These are superb. So do you get these over a $5,000 tower? That's probably gonna be the pressing question. I don't want people to think that a $5,000 tower is always gonna sound better than a $5,000 uh, bookshelf um, because that's not the case. I have a pretty expensive tower system and the, what these do is miraculous. So don't rule it out just because of their size. If you really have to have a tower, just go for the Alex. It's this plus more. So um, I'm getting passionate. I'm talking with my hands. <laughs> So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching the review. I hope this helped explain the essence of, of the Alyssa and why I love them so much. Um, and if you have any questions, shoot me a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We're going to talk more about my source equipment. Um, I'm going to talk about the PS Audio Amp and my turntable next. Um, you know, we I'm, I'm very fortunate to be able to listen to some of this type of stuff because I love listening to music more than I do just playing with speakers. Again, I'm not the audio engineer guy. I The experience is what makes it special to me. So stuff like this is incredible because it fits that uh, quench and thirst I have for music and it makes it so much more special and enjoyable. So anyway, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next time.